So the omega-3s are highly anti-inflammatory, like I mentioned, especially omega-3 DHA. Most people aren't getting virtually any EPA or DHA in the diet. Uh, most people are only getting alpha linoleic acid or ALA, which is the plant-based form of omega-3s. Uh, the conversion of ALA to EPA is between 5 and 10%, and the conversion of ALA to DHA is between 0.5 and 4%. And so it's feasibly, you know, impossible to make enough DHA from getting ALA alone. You need to get EPA and DHA from animal-based sources. So that would be shellfish, caviar, fatty fish. Um, lamb is one land animal that's highest in DHA as well. Um, and so a lot of people aren't necessarily eating foods like this to get those animal-based omega-3s in. And some people, if they're like vegetarian and not eating seafood or they're vegan, relying on algal oils, there's another added issue here as well. Because just to get a little technical briefly, if you look at the structure of the fats in algal oil and in animal-based sources of, of omega-3s, they're primarily triglycerides. The one exception is caviar, which is primarily the phospholipid form of omega-3s, which is actually the most bioavailable to the brain and the eyes. The retina is about 35, sorry, about 65% by weight DHA, and the brain is about 35% by weight DHA. So these tissues rely on DHA in order to function. And there's a researcher called Dr. Michael Crawford who actually works, um, he's like a major DHA researcher, and he has shown that DHA actually works at the quantum biologic level to convert photonic or light information into electrical impulses, which allows you to render reality from moment to moment. So the DHA in your eyes and your brain is actually what is allowing you to have an experience of the world. Um, so it's very, very important. But if we're looking at the triglyceride form in algal oil or in, in fish or shellfish, triglycerides are made of a glycerol backbone, which has three carbons. And at each carbon you can have, well, technically at each oxygen that's bound to each carbon, you can have a fatty acid. So there's three fatty acids on the glycerol backbone. Um, the first one is SN1, middle one is SN2, the last one is SN3. So in algal oil, you have primarily SN1 and SN3 EPA and DHA. In fatty fish and shellfish, you primarily have the SN2 position. It turns out that the SN2 position is highly more bioavailable for humans than the SN1 and SN3 positions. So if you're looking to optimize your EPA and DHA status, it is very prudent to get animal-based sources of these fats um, as they're just going to, you know, be a better bang for your buck and also support your biology better. Of course, there's lots of other nutrients that come along for the ride um, when it comes to um, the shellfish and the fatty fish like mackerel, sardines, herring, um, salmon, uh, ideally wild caught whenever you can. Um, of course, the diet of the fish in question will greatly influence the fat composition. So if you're eating farmed salmon, you're not really going to be getting any omega-3s because those salmon are fed corn, which is enriched in omega-6s. Um, what allows the fish that you're eating for omega-3s to actually get that EPA and DHA is either they're consuming algae or they're consuming another animal that consumed algae. The algae is ultimately the, the initial source of the omegas, but by consuming them, these other animals can convert them into the more bioavailable form that supports our bodies better. I wanna come back to DHA and you did go deep into it before and I think you may have touched on this piece, but I wanna talk about the creation of energy from light by upping our DHA in the diet. And you talk about this in your ebook where you want people eating a certain amount of DHA to get this benefit. Yeah, so there's actually an, maybe a little bit of an interesting distinction here. So I think melanin and DHA share some things in common. The melanin part of the story is really about harnessing photonic energy to make energy within the system. I mean, in theory, at least, we still have to flesh that out, but it seems very plausible. The DHA part of the story is really allowing your body also to harness photonic energy from the sun, but for a different purpose. So the DHA is going to help prevent burning also from by maintaining a lower um, inflammatory state in the body. But it's also allowing you to, I mean, it's DHA is a really interesting thing because there are some like uh, recycling mechanisms within the, the eyes and the brain that allow its, its levels and its... Um, like the, the 
the molecules that are there to be retained and recycled in some way. But, you know, you might imagine that having a poor DHA status could actually result in people being less present because you're literally not interfacing with as much of the energy from your environment, the photonic information from your environment that is actually giving you access to your sensory apparatus, basically. Um, and so I don't think there's any research on this, but, you know, it would be an interesting question to propose that, like, if we if we had a way that we could assess DHA status in the central nervous system, maybe a good proxy would be blood levels, for example. If there's a way to determine if somebody's awareness is actually influenced by that status. Because, like I mentioned earlier, that DHA is basically taking photons and co converting them into electrical impulses that then allow the brain to process that information and make sense of it. Um, so it's working at like a very fundamental level that I, I think we still have like, you know, some interesting questions that could be proposed there. But I definitely recommend people check out Dr. Crawford's work if they're interested in learning more on DHA and he has some really great review papers on the quantum biologic mechanisms of how DHA is working and yeah it's very very foundational and a, like a super interesting um, topic to delve into. If you enjoyed that clip you're gonna want to head over here and catch the full episode. I'll see you over there. UV light produces this complex pro-hormone in the body called pro-opiomelanocortin or POMC. POMC is cleaved into 10 different hormonal products, one of which is beta endorphin, which is a natural opioid that the body makes in response to UVB light in particular. Whenever